We welcome Jonathan Keller from the California Family Council. Jonathan, thank you for being with us tonight. Let it, let's get your reaction to the fact that California is a sanctuary state and it is welcoming with open arms women from out of state for abortion services. Well, first off, thanks again for having me back with you. It's It's been definitely a whirlwind few days, and I know we're still kind of settling into this new normal. Uh, there are states across the country that are addressing how they're going to respond to the ruling, and I would just start off by saying that I, I, I hear and I acknowledge a lot of the concern that I hear from people on the other side of this issue. I, I don't think that anybody on the other side of this, whether it's the first partner or um, Ms. Hicks at Planned Parenthood, um, I actually think we have a lot more common ground than people would think. We all want to see women cared for and loved. We want to see uh, unborn children uh, taken care of. We want to see there be fewer unwanted pregnancies. But I think the concern that I really have and our organization has is the response. Um, California, as we've, we've heard in multiple reports over the last few weeks and months, we're an amazing state. We have incredible natural resources. We have world-class medical facilities. We have a historic budget surplus. I really just think that we can do better, not just for our own citizens, but even for citizens around the country, than just saying, here's a free plane ticket, come here and get an abortion. I, sadly, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that California legislators seem to only be focusing on that one choice. If, if you have a, a poor, underserved woman in another state, Louisiana, Alabama, Kentucky, we're not offering her an opportunity to come here and deliver her baby. We're only saying you can only come to California if you want an abortion. And frankly, I just think that's really sad, and I think we can do better. So I'll ask you the same question I asked the first partner and I asked the governor. Um, what is your message to that person in another state who is scared, who maybe was raped, maybe uh, had sex with a family member, who maybe has a baby that may have a birth defect, who maybe is underage, who doesn't want to give birth, and now cannot... Uh, stop that pregnancy because of the state that they live in. What's your message yeah. to that person? Well, uh, first off, I want to acknowledge those are all, by far, the hardest questions that we deal with when it comes to the issue of unplanned pregnancy. And I'm, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it and say that this is an easy answer. And sadly, I think that we have, as a society, there are a lot of underlying root causes and issues. And tragically, for the last 49 years, some of those things have been able to fester and kind of um, become malignant under the surface, uh, but they've just been kind of papered over because of the free and easy access to abortion in lots of the country. So what I would say to any person that has experienced sexual assault, anybody that has experienced uh, violence of any kind in this regard, uh, first off, I want to say I'm sorry. And I want to say that I think we need to, as a society, no matter which state you live in, we need to do a better job and, and again, I'll, I'll put this on uh, my own side, whether you're pro-life, conservative, whatever you want to title it, I think we have done actually a poor job in the past of reckoning with the gravity of sexual assault and sexual violence. And I think that's something that we could really do a better job of. With that being said, though, I also don't think that the right solution, the, the child in this case, is not a perpetrator. The child in this case has no guilt in and of themselves, and I don't think that they should be um, the the victim in this situation. I don't think that they deserve abortion either. I hate even having to see that phrase, unwanted children. It breaks my heart that yeah. there are kids out there who are looking for a forever home. We know that the foster care system right now uh, is overloaded. So what would your group do to help those kids? We have less than 30 seconds. Would you and your group adopt those kids? Yeah, absolutely. I would say for California Family Council, we work with a, a large group of other organizations across the state, pregnancy resource centers, churches, etc. One of the things, for example, that drew my, my, my wife and I to the church we attend in Fresno, California, is the fact that it has a high percentage of families who have adopted through the foster care system, uh, through the international adoption system. And I think that is something we all can do a better job of. of providing forever homes for those families and letting every family know, every woman facing an unplanned pregnancy know that we're here for you, we love you, and we want to take care of not just your child, but of you as well. Oh, there are hundreds of thousands of uh, kids that right now need forever homes, mm -hmm. and that number most likely to go up mm -hmm. uh, now that this has uh, changed in Washington. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Thank you both again.